Hello everyone, it's day one of the stay home reading rush. To be honest, I'm a little nervous about this readathon. One, vlogging it is, I don't know how that's going to go. I've tried making reading vlogs in the past and they haven't always turned out great. Then also I'm just worried about how much reading I can actually realistically get done in this time. I'm very out of practice when it comes to reading. I mean, look, when I was a kid, I could easily get through 50, 60 books no problem in a year but i'm still sort of working myself back up to that building up that habit building up the sort of focus you need to read for long periods of time so we'll see all the books i've chosen are pretty short hopefully i can read them all during the next four days bad that my favorite part of reading is updating my reading on Goodreads. Vegemite toast, time to eat some toast with some Vegemite. Workout completed. Now I can finally get back to reading. Also, there are no pretenses here. I taste blood after two flights of stairs, so I don't know who I'm trying to fool with this working out footage garbage. I think the hardest part about vlogging during this readathon is the fact that I'll probably have to wear a bra the whole time. And I think that might be a deal breaker. So I've moved from the rocking chair to the couch so I could just stretch out a bit more. I'm about 30 pages into The Guilty Feminist by Deborah Francis White. You can see that if it's not too glary. And it's surprisingly dense, but in a really good way. It's so informative. I'm just in the chapter where she's talking about the history of feminism and the history of the patriarchy, which is something that I don't often read about. And I've learned a lot of little really interesting tidbits. For example, I learned about something called parasite feminism, which is basically a school of feminism that advocates for exploiting the current patriarchal power structures and draining it of its resources to achieve social justice, which is fascinating. I also really, really like that the author from the offset is acknowledging um, the importance of, of intersectionality, basically, and she is constantly drilling in the importance of recognizing your own privileges and when structures of inequality might benefit you as well as oppress you and disadvantage you and really ties in all the different struggles the struggle against capitalism the struggle against colonization the struggle against racism the struggle against patriarchy and she's linking them all together really well so far and this is only 30 pages in i am so excited to see what this book has in store but i'm really enjoying it so far and I hope I finish it because it is very dense and I'm constantly pausing to take everything in and, and really digest it because I really want to absorb all of this really, really important content. Cool, so I just finished part one of The Guilty Feminist and it has worked up quite the appetite. So I'm going to go and eat some lunch. So on this ever going 
own journey of self-discovery, I've now realized that when I can no longer seem to focus on my work and just watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine fan compilations on YouTube for hours on end, it means that I am in need of sustenance and I'm hungry. So, who knew? <laughs> sleepy. I've just had dinner, which means my <laughs> post-meal brain chemicals are kicking in and I am finding it hard to stay awake, but I am so far behind on my reading schedule. Yeah, I don't know how many pages exactly, but I need to read more <laughs> before I go to sleep tonight. So I'm going to make it happen. I'm making some tea. I'm going to get it done. I'm done with reading for the first day. I'm getting really sleepy and I'm about a hundred and 130 pages in um, into The Guilty Feminist, just under halfway, which is quite a lot. I can't remember the last time I read 130 pages in one day. I think upon reflection, I don't really think it's a huge deal if I don't finish all of the books during the readathon. I mean, finishing three books in four days is very ambitious. Yeah, I'm just gonna pace myself and just stop when I don't feel like reading anymore. Okay, good night. of the stay home reading rush and I'm just out for a little morning walk with the grace of God above I managed to wake up early enough so I could get a quick walk in before my appointment this morning so that's really nice I'm just really enjoying listening to the birds and getting the morning air thankfully it's really really um it's not very sunny um very cloudy and cool so really good. I'm just so lucky to live somewhere with lots of trees and greenery. I know not everyone can be so lucky, so it's really making the most of it. Why am I fucking walking up the hill? Oh my god. So I figured now's a good time to end to update you on The Guilty Feminist. So, you know, so far it's reading a lot like a self-help book and not in a bad way. I think it started off really looking in depth at the historical context of things like feminism and the patriarchy but that was all wrapped up really quickly and now it's focusing more on the personal journey of I guess taking up space in spaces that are that have been historically quite exclusive she really argues for this idea of inclusion how inclusion is how power is built basically and how being able to include yourself in those spaces and assert your confidence in those spaces is a huge part of I guess, overcoming oppression, which is a really, really interesting take. I think it's a really practical guide for individuals on how to just build themselves up more to participate in the movement for social justice. I think that's a really, really interesting argument. I'm really excited to see where she goes with that. I'm, again, less than halfway through, so I'm sure she's gonna cover a lot more, but so far, I'm really enjoying it. So I've just finished my appointment with my therapist and it went really well. Usually I'm quite exhausted after the after therapy, but um, I'm feeling pretty energized still, which is really good. I've got about an hour until um, my webinar about community organizing. Uh, that webinar is being hosted by Tipping Point and I would highly recommend you check them out. I'll leave a link down below to their website because they are doing some really, really cool stuff when it comes to climate justice. So I'm going to have my second coffee for the day and then I will do a bit of reading.
That was a really informative webinar, lots of really useful information and strategies for building action and fighting injustice uh, in your communities. I just wanted to quickly mention that a lot of civil society organisations um, across Australia have released this open letter to the government calling on them to properly resource Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities across the country who are facing the brunt of the effects and the impact and the burden of the COVID-19 crisis. A lot of the inequities and a lot of existing systemic injustices are worsened and exacerbated during this crisis. And I think especially when it comes to uh, the health inequities between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people around the world, but especially in Australia, that's definitely somewhere we're, we're seeing the sort of most pain and suffering. And I think um, it's really, really important to acknowledge that and show solidarity with that. So I'm going to link the open letter in the description box and I really hope you guys sign it and share it with your friends and your community so we can support our First Nations people. Okay, back to the readathon. So the time zone is half past seven on day two and I just went to a hangout, an online hangout with the Climate Justice Union of Western Australia just to meet up and chat and just socialise, which was really cool, met some really cool people. I've got a good few hours left in the day of reading, still still working through The Guilty Feminist, uh, which I'm really enjoying. It's getting better and better with every page, but I think in a few pages I'm going to give it a rest and start the number one ladies detective agency. I think that's, this is the second longest book on my TBR for the readathon. This will be the book that I'm only going to read in one room. So as of this moment, I cannot leave my bedroom if I'm holding this book in my hand. That's halfway done and I haven't even finished a book yet. <laughs> oh dear. Hey mom, how's your book? Slow and steady, very slow. Can you tell our viewers what you're reading? I'm reading Picnic at Hanging Rock. And I'm enjoying it. It's an Australian story. But it's very, very, very slow going. <laughs> so I'm just over two thirds of the way through The Guilty Feminist and still really, really enjoying it. But I'm just going to switch over to another one of my books now so I can hopefully finish more than one book during this readathon. Time to start the number one ladies detective agency. I hope it isn't racist. Back in the kitchen for day three. I had a bit of a late start this morning. Didn't really get out of bed until half past nine, but that's okay, sometimes you need to sleep in. But I don't know about you, but I always feel really on edge if I don't think that I've woken up early enough. It also doesn't help that I had a really weird dream last night and I'm still sort of in the mood frame of that dream. But like, you know when you have those really intense dreams um, and you just are in a really weird mood for like a long time afterwards? Yeah. That's the place I'm in now. Also, uh, Phantom of the Opera is showing on Angelo Webber's YouTube channel today. He's live streaming and releasing all the live recordings of a lot of his famous musicals. And last week I did see Jesus Christ Superstar. It was pretty good, not bad. And tonight it's, or last night, um, Australia time, uh, Phantom of the Opera was released. So I am probably gonna watch that today. from one set of pajama pants to another because I'm living my best life. Okay, oh my god! Basically, I only read a few pages of this last night and then I switched over to YouTube. I'm getting really into Brooklyn Nine-Nine montages and I don't know why, 
I think it's time to rewatch the series, but that's gonna have to wait until the end of this readathon. So I'm going to read as much of this as I can today, and hopefully I can finish The Guilty Feminist today too, because I only have about 70 or so pages left of that. So let's get reading. For lunch. Is it a bar or a long? Yes. Papa Don's are the best. Look at that. I am the biggest idiot. I, without even thinking, I brought this book into the kitchen and read it while I was eating my lunch. I was not allowed to do that because this was the book I was supposed to be reading for one of the reading challenges. So I can't use this book for that challenge anymore. So I have to finish it and then start another book that I only read in my bedroom if I'm going to get all these reading challenges done. That's looking very unlikely. <laughs> so, ah! Ladies Detective Agency and I think I'm about 50 pages in. I think it's worth mentioning that there is a sort of sexual encounter here that is very, I guess, I guess most people would read it and say that a sexual assault happened and the way that this is being handled is making me very uncomfortable. I don't know if they're going to explore this idea further and and sort of really delve into the nuances of this relationship that's happening but as of now, I'm feeling a bit icky about it. Also, I'm noticing that throughout the book so far, there have been a few weird sort of like contradicting philosophies sort of being propagated when it comes to women and I guess gender roles. There's been an instance where the main character, a boy is harassing her in class during Sunday school when she's a child and she tells the teacher about it and that boy is punished and this is depicted as this big victory of like men like learning how to treat women properly. But then the narrator also just like says very casually some really sexist remarks that are just sort of accepted and not really challenged in any way at all. I don't really know what to make of this book. I'm going to keep reading this book for a few more minutes um, and then I'm going to switch back to The Guilty Feminist so I can finish that off and get my first reading challenge done. Um, I want to finish at least one book during this readathon and I think that's going to be The Guilty Feminist. But other than that though, I think the writing style in this, it's like a very light, cozy, sort of really laid back read. You're just told the story in a very matter of fact kind of way, in a kind of old fashioned sort of style I'm finding, just like a, someone's telling you a story and this is what the story is. It doesn't have a lot of narrative complexity to that per se, it's just very sort of matter of fact. Here's what happened, here's the character, here's what you need to know about them kind of deal. So I'm not not enjoying that, I'm still finding it like an enjoyable read, but yeah, this is one very dubious aspect so far that I'm noticing. An attack. We're going grocery shopping and we're coming up with a plan of attack. Yeah, you got it, baby. Grocery shop done. I think 50% of the stuff we bought was just bread in various forms. We're going for a great night of eating. Lots of bread, lots of carbs. Woo! Ooh. Let's finish this. tired and I'm finding it really hard to focus on the words on the page that I'm reading and I just sort of want to do other things. I'm just not really in the mood to read anymore. At least I feel like I need a bit of a break but then also 
the read -a -thon's also finished. I haven't even finished a single book yet and I feel like I need to have something to show for it at the end of all this. But then on the other hand, I've read more in the past three days than I have ever in the past few years. Like this is the most sort of concentrated effort at reading that I've ever sort of seen in myself. I think that's the point of the readathon, right? Anyway, I think I'll just take a break, just play it by ear, maybe watch Phantom of the Opera or Brooklyn by Nine. Oh, I still have to post my Instagram challenge of the day. So I'll do that first. <sighs> yeah, not a big deal if I don't finish anything. It's the fact that I'm doing it that counts, not the outcome. It's the journey, not the destination. Some inspiration for you guys out there. Cool. Good morning. It's about quarter past ten right now and it's the final day of the reading rush. I still haven't finished a single book. I woke up about 10 minutes ago and look, I don't know about you, but I feel like I've been conditioned all my life to, to view early rising hand in hand with just being a good, productive, responsible person. I think I've sort of internalized this really horrible idea of like, if you're a late riser, if you sleep in, you're unmotivated, you're lazy, you don't have a plan. Like, I don't know where I got this from. Every time I wake up, like, say after seven in the morning, which let's be real, that's a struggle. <laughs> like seven o'clock is so early. I already just feel like I failed the day as if you have to pass and fail each day. I'm sorry if that was TMI in terms of the inner workings of my mind. Most strangers on the internet don't really want to hear that, but it's just how I'm feeling. And since I'm vlogging, I might as well broadcast it to the internet because why else would I be sticking a camera in my face? So my plan for the day is to hopefully finish a damn book. <laughs> that would be great if I could actually finish a book during this readathon. Lawyer standards, you can never fail. <laughs> okay, let's see how we go. I just realized I've been spending most of the day vacuuming and none of the day reading. I need to start reading, time's running out. What for that angle? Camera reception. I'm not a photographer by any means, but the one thing I've really enjoyed during this readathon is the Instagram challenges and you know the excuse to get creative and oftentimes get outside and take some pretty photos and share them with the world. <laughs> really, out of breath from climbing those stairs. So as I was taking the SD card out of the camera that I used to shoot the Instagram challenges. It slipped, I did a weird thing with my fingers and it just flew out and fell behind my desk. And now I have to crawl under it to find it because I am a useless human being. Is it in the bin? Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you go? Where is the SD card? Do you all ever lose things and just have no idea? Like they've literally disappeared off the face of the earth? Okay, found the SD card. Let's find this photo. I don't know why, but reading has been going so slowly for me today. Like, from day one, I feel like I've been getting slower and slower subsequently in terms of the number of pages I read each day. And it's a bit frustrating. I really wanted to finish The Guilty Feminist before, um, you know, by 6.30, because that's when I have to start making dinner. Stir fry noodles. Holla. So 
so I just finished The Guilty Feminist by Deborah Francis White and I absolutely loved it. It was so good. Oh my god. <laughs> so to wrap this book up, I think fundamentally this book was about embracing the paradoxes and hypocrisies that you might feel as a feminist or as an activist and laughing at them and in doing so relieving any shame or guilt you feel because of them and thus allowing yourself to continue to do the best you can in the work you do to, I guess, fight for justice for women and fight for equality and fight for all these really positive changes that we need. So by finishing this, I have completed the challenge of the readathon to read a book that will make me smile. This book definitely made me smile. It was so wonderful. I just felt so warm and uplifted and encouraged reading this book. It was inspiring and galvanizing and just so, so empowering. I liked so much about this book. One of the main themes the author discusses is this idea of inclusion, how power and influence comes from being included in certain spaces, in privileged spaces, and how you including yourself in those spaces and finding the confidence and the inner strength to be able to assert your own existence within those spaces and pave the way for more people, people who are less advantaged than you, people who are more marginalized and more oppressed than you, who have less privilege than you, to enter those spaces and that's how you slowly change and reform these systems that have oppressed so many of us. There's also a lot in here from the perspective of the arts and entertainment industry. Of course, Deborah Francis White is a comedian and, you know, a TV personality and an entertainer, so that's sort of her world and there's a lot in here from representation to abuses of power within the entertainment industry. There's also a really, really strong focus on intersectionality in this book. I really liked how she used her platform. She's transcribed interviews she's had with fellow entertainers and activists of different races, of different abilities, of different uh, gender identities and sexualities. So many different experiences are given voice in this book and I really like that because now having read this, I want to go and read what each of those people have written and said and done and I want to learn about their voices and their experiences. So I think that's a really great power this book has. I think fundamentally the crux of this book is looking at all the thoughts we might have as feminists that seem um, contradictory to our goals and to our values. So you know, like the sort of I'm a feminist but sort of statements. <laughs> I'm a feminist but <laughs> I am four years old. So for example, each of the chapters in here begin with a little statement. I think my favorite one is, hang on, let me find it. Oh, my back. I really need a pee. Okay, my favorite one is, I'm a feminist but I spent more time shopping for a wedding dress than I've spent on protesting in my life. So there is a lot of humor in here and I think that's what made this book so readable and so compelling. Hmm, what would my I'm a feminist but statement be? Oh, I got one. I think mine would be, I'm a feminist, but I honestly spend more time vacuuming than I do reading the news. It's so bad, but it's true. Any of you out there watching, let me know in the comments what your I'm a feminist but statement is. You are all feminists, right? That was a little off the cuff summary and review of this book. I absolutely loved it. I implore you all to pick it out. This was 100% five star read. I really, really enjoyed it. Okay, the time is 9.21 p.m. I think I'm going to call it for this readathon. I had a really great time reading. I only finished The Guilty Feminist, so I only completed that one reading challenge, but hey, it's better than zero, and I definitely read more than I would have usually. The other book I picked up during this readathon was the number one ladies detective agency, and I read just under a third of that. So, in all honesty, one and a third books in four days is huge for me, because usually I average like two books a month, so I think that's a really huge step up in my reading rate and hopefully that sort of carries on forward. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to the next readathon and hopefully I'll read even more books then and I'll have way more books to talk to you guys about. Please let me know how you're doing with your reading and just in general in the comments. I would so love to hear from you and I am looking forward to seeing you next time.